how is this album different than the, the other, the two others? Well, let's see. First of all, Billy Conway is the full-time drummer now, so... And I think there's a lot more unity in the band and that it's reflected on the album. Mm -hmm. And uh, what else? Dana has developed his double sax technique, and you can hear that on a couple of songs. Mm -hmm. um, there's two songs recorded live uh, by our sound man, Phil Davidson, and one from Holland and one from California. So we put those on because they're really good versions. And mm -hmm. We wanted the album to reflect all the touring and the live playing that we were doing, so... Mm -hmm. It sounds more tight, you know, it sounds Maybe, like you're... Uh, you've, you've proven, Morphin has proven that less is more. <laughs> how, did you, how did you get the idea to, to decide three people, no guitar? Mm. Well, we tried it as three, and it sounded good to us, so we continued. Mm -hmm. I think you like to be noticed, because not only you play the... the bottleneck on a two-string bass is that your idea was that your idea to, to do I that i guess there's a lot of instruments with just one or two strings all around the world and it's interesting because every string has every note and it's really not a limitation at all mm -hmm. once you get used to it so and uh i don't know uh, i started out on one string because that was the easiest and i gradually promoted myself to two strings and now that's that feels pretty complete so you think you'll stop there I think we'll stop, stop there. taking off <laughs> putting no. on how do you write your songs you write them alone and then you bring them to the group or do you compose? yeah pretty much the the words and the general musical outline are there mm -hmm. but it requires a lot of contribution from Billy and Dana to make it work within this format because mm -hmm. we can't fall back into traditional roles within the band because it's because of the instruments mm -hmm. you know. are you are you quite paternal when you write a song when you give it to them do you feel like or do you do you feel like I have to protect well, it or are you open to their no I'm open mm -hmm. I, I used to ask them just play this play that mm -hmm. and, and it was never any good so I said just play what you think is the best and that's always the best so. Because since being three, you have to really find a harmony between yeah, you guys. How, how, did you, how did you meet? How did you decide to form this? Well, Billy and I were in a, another band for a long time, before Morphine, mm -hmm. called Treat Her Right, Treat La Bien, <laughs> as they say in some <laughs> good, places. Good advice, men. <laughs> yes, words to live by, mm -hmm. we like to think. And Dana actually was a friend who was our roadie for one tour, and... He used to play saxophone with us occasionally, and mm -hmm. I was a big fan of Dana, and I, I always wanted to, to have a different band just with Dana, and mm -hmm. so now uh, we do it. I, I read that you, Prince is one of the singers that you really admire, and it seems surprising. Mm. It seems so, such a contrast to what you do. Mm. Why, what, what does Prince have that, or love symbol, I should say? Well, Prince, I just admire his his work, not just his singing, but his producing and his songwriting and his playing and I just feel an affinity with his creative process. I, it's hard to explain, mm -hmm. but I, when I hear a, his records, I, I feel an, an affinity. I can uh, empathize with the choices that he made and the directions that he took. And mm -hmm. I, I mention him a lot because I, I hope that someday he'll hear or read me talking about him and he'll give me a phone call. Mm -hmm. Are you in mind being produced or, or collaborating? I just, yeah, either, anything really. Mm -hmm. I just like to, uh, even if I could just shake his hand, I'd be happy maybe. I don't know. No, I'd like to work with him. Mm -hmm. I'd like to do something with him sometime. And who knows? What do you think about all his, you know, changing names? Uh, don't know. You don't care. It's like, you like his stuff and... It's interesting, isn't mm. it? <laughs> he has the whole world confused. <laughs> so. That's an accomplishment, mm -hmm. I suppose. But you're from Boston, or the group is from Boston. Mm -hmm. You've had Aerosmith from Boston, New Kids on the Block, mm -hmm. oh, Morphine, <laughs> Dixies. Yeah. Is there a particular atmosphere in that town that, that is sort of putting out well, those groups? Yeah, there's a lot of different kinds of groups in Boston. Thousands of them, actually. Mm -hmm. Much more than you would expect. It's not a big city. But there's a lot of small clubs where you can experiment without any pressure you can mm -hmm. 
just play in the corner, no stage, no lights, no expectations. You don't even have to be good. As long as you don't irritate the regulars, it's, mm -hmm. uh, you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So it was in that spirit that Morphine began. It's just one of many experiments and projects that everyone in the band was trying. Mm -hmm. It's also a big, it's a college town. I mean, there are about, I don't know town. how many, 200. College city. College city, you know, 200 it's true, colleges yeah. there. And I think a lot of these groups, alternative groups, are, are being born on college mm -hmm. campuses. Maybe that's also a... Partly, yeah. There's a lot of bands that move to Boston from Hawaii and even from New York sometimes. Mm -hmm. Because life in New York is hard for a band. Just, just... Yeah, the cost is really high just to live in New York. Yeah. And if you could write the soundtrack to any movie by, who would you choose? What director would you choose? Or maybe two directors? Oh, I don't know. How about Robert Altman? Is he available? I think so. He's open okay. to a lot of ideas, I think. Bob, give me a call. <laughs>